I'm conflicted. As someone who primarily only games on PlayStation, Xbox games coming to the platform should seem like a major win. Not to mention, this essentially brings an end to the console war. But to me, this isn't a good thing. This is bad. This is very bad. We have a different vision. Play the games you want with the people you want anywhere you want. Starfield is coming to PlayStation 5. While Bethesda will launch its Indiana Jones game first as an Xbox console exclusive, it's currently set to have a rather short period of exclusivity. The precipice of the end of the war or something like that. They said the console wars is over. I don't I don't mean to use hyperbole, but they saying the console war is over. We're not in the business about consoling Sony or out consoling Nintendo. Um, there isn't really a great solution or win for us. It's like, yeah, this is for you. We're gonna, you know, get the first party, the content, this is for you. This idea that if we just focused more on great games on our console, that somehow we're gonna win the console race, I think doesn't really lay into the reality of most people. I've always been a champion for exclusives. They give a platform its identity and they make the system memorable. Plus it mixes things up and gives you a reason to own the other systems. In all honesty, I was never going to own an Xbox this generation. I recently upgraded my PC and with day one PC releases, I said to myself, eh, it doesn't really make sense to spend another 500 on an Xbox just to play games worse than I can play them on my PC. Now if the games weren't on PC, then I would own an Xbox. I'm a part of that small demographic they always talk about. Although I don't know how small that demographic actually is. But Xbox games come into PlayStation. The rumor starts off small, coming from reliable sources, that it would be Hi-Fi Rush and Sea of Thieves. Still exclusive games, but games that didn't really seem so consequential. But now the rumors are Starfield, Indiana Jones, and Halo are coming. And I don't think it's a hot take to say this would kill the hardware side of Xbox. If you can buy a PlayStation and get everything or buy an Xbox and miss out on the PlayStation exclusives, I feel like people would just go to the place where they can get everything, even if they have to wait a little bit. You see people say, well, this is Game Pass's fault. Xbox fans, they aren't buying exclusives. They're being conditioned to not buy games. So now they aren't buying third party games either. Microsoft isn't getting a 30% cut. But I'm not here to talk about the business of it all. I'm here to talk about, is the console war over? No. At first, I, there was this feeling of, it could be, like, damn, is it really over? Are people gonna lay down their weapons? There was a sense of peace, like, ah, at least that part of the community is gone. But no, I didn't believe it would last. I thought people would pick something new to align their identity with, whether that's the Switch or PC, whatever it may be. I feel like a lot of the people who engage in the console war aren't actually gamers to begin with. I feel like they're just conversation merchants. They just want to talk. So they're going to find something else to talk about because what else are they going to do? Play games? <laughs> yeah, right. And as you expected when the news broke, their Xbox accounts went crazy, seven hour long Twitter spaces, meltdowns, everything you would expect. But it only took one day for people to say, we're going down with the ship. I saw a tweet that said, I'd rather stay on Xbox than buy a pointless PS5 with no games. And it's like, if the PS5 has all the Xbox games and just one exclusive, then it has more games than the Xbox. So when I saw that tweet, I said, yeah, it's not over. It will never be over. And we just have to accept it. I don't understand what people would be a fan of at this point. The controller, the UI, the ecosystem, I guess. But like I said at the start of the video, I don't think this is a good thing. This isn't ideal. It's like, sure, all my games in one place, that's nice. Being able to tweet a joke, sure, it's kind of funny. Getting platinum trophies in iconic Xbox games like Halo and Gears would be a funny sight to see. But eh, that's where the positives end. And the consequences are way worse. PlayStation is already starting to feel complacent. You already see out of the two of them, they're making the most anti-consumer decisions. And I can't imagine them with no competition. We've seen what they've done in the past. Two more things I want to say. This isn't a more people get to play great games situation. It isn't. And to all the people who realize this isn't a more people get to play great games situation, where were you when these games started coming to PC? I've been saying this for years. When it comes to PlayStation and Xbox, I don't think the game should come to PC for all the reasons I said in this video. 
but the conversation when it came to games going to PC was always, well, PC gamers were never going to buy a console. It's such a small market. People want to just relax and play on their TV and they're never going to go to PC and development costs are so high and they need that extra revenue to put towards new games. Where's that argument now? The same argument. You could say Xbox games, they cost too much to make and Game Pass isn't m making money. So we need to put the games on other systems to bring in money. The people who are on PlayStation and don't own an Xbox yet, they were never going to own an Xbox. Yada, yada, yada. Everything that people have been saying about games going to PC, you could make the same argument, but I don't see people making the same argument. People realize why it's an issue now. I don't see the same people that said that. Oh, this is tragic. Oh no, this is such bad news. Like, this has been happening with PC. The same arguments you can make for PlayStation, you can make for PC. It's been like this. This is why I was against the games going to PC. The Xbox games going to PC, the PlayStation games going to PC, all the games going to PC for the exact same reason. And you can see, people like to say, well, PC is different. It's not a console. I don't really think it's all that different. I really don't. It's like Xbox was finally making some progress, finally in a position to maybe not win. They were never going to win, but apply some pressure, close the gap and go into the next generation on a better foot. They have the developers now, even if they kind of cheated and just purchased them. The studios have had time to cook, but now they're about to serve it up and it goes everywhere. And you look around and you look at the past when a console manufacturer starts manufacturing consoles, nobody else comes to save the day. Nobody replaces them. Nobody really popped up after Atari or Sega. That was it. It was over. And I don't think Amazon, I don't think Apple are going to try and take advantage and try. No, I think. That's it. I think I think PlayStation and Nintendo would be the only two left and it would become a monopoly. And that's the last thing that I want. So I get to play Indiana Jones on PlayStation. I get to play Starfield on PlayStation. I get to play Halo on PlayStation. Big deal. Being able to do that is not worth the lack of competition for me. Because that's what this would do. It would kill the competition. And that's unfortunate. But I guess we'll see how it ends.